Hey guys, welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called The Primary by Mountaintop Games. The Primary is for one to six players, takes about, about 60 minutes to play, and it's for ages 14 and up. In The Primary, guess what? Change is coming, and with that you're going to be needing to vote in a new electoral candidate that, for presidency. And you're going to be playing with other candidates. Now, basically, the game is going to revolve around the United States, and your candidate is trying to vie for influence in each of the different states during different rounds. While the rounds are going on, you're going to be choosing to gain influence, moving around the different states, uh, setting up news, setting up fake news, all this kind of stuff to kind of garner influence for yourself and reduce the amount of influence per state per round for your other opponents. And throughout the game, all 12 rounds, if you can get enough of your of the votes, you're going to be elected president. And so that is the basic idea of the game. It's an interesting one. Let's go ahead and take a look. So here we have Matt Quark's The Primary, and as you can see, you're going to be getting a plethora of different things. First of all, there's the game board here, which is going to show you all the different states, as well as a score tracker and the phases of the game. Nice and easy over here. This here is going to be the first player marker, the little primary action uh, token here. And then you've got these things here, which can be used for voting. Uh, as you can see, you have little tokens here, which are going to represent the rounds and where players are going to try and go across the board. And I'll explain setup in a bit. And you're also going to be getting player markers. There's up to six players, but I currently have only five. And also you're going to be getting bags of influence over here. Each player is going to get their own unique set of influence to tokens that they're going to be using on the board here. There's also going to be unique player decks for each player, and they're going to get a full hand of 16 cards, I believe, in which you can go ahead and use during the rounds of play to garner influence and move around the board. There's also a plethora of candidates you'll be able to choose from throughout the game, uh, uh, beginning of the game, and they all have their own unique special ability and starting influence tokens. Also, not last but least, or not least but last, is you're going to have a uh, news uh cards. We're going to be using these guys for the beginning, in the, the beginning of the round. You're going to be actually selecting one of these things and seeing what happens. Kind of changes the way the game plays. And finally, you got the Electobot 9000. And this is going to be used for solo play, in which you'll be uh, moving things around with this Electobot and also rolling this die here. So that is basically going to begin in the game. The primary, let's go ahead and talk about it. And in the game, the primary, you're going to be getting a candidate. You're also going to be getting all the influence that candidate's going to come with, as, long as, as well as a special ability of some type and you're going to be getting a deck of cards. This deck of cards is going to allow you to basically mechanically organize your turns throughout the game, which there's going to be 12 rounds of. You'll be placing down four cards along with everybody else, and in turn order, flipping them over one at a time along with everybody else, and going and doing them all. So flip over the first card with everybody, go ahead and do it, flip over the second card, and go ahead and do it, and so on and so forth. After that, then you're going to go ahead and vote, if there is a voting phase, in which you're trying to gain points, and and finally, you're then going to just organize, take everything off the areas that have already been voted for, and uh, make sure all your points are collected, and any influence cubes you don't need anymore, they, they're going to go away, and then you're going to start all over again. And basically, you're going to be moving around the board. There's special cards you can use, like super pack cards, or you can try and collect more influence, as well as the ability to fly across the United States, and that could actually cost influence as well. So let me go ahead and show you the setup of the game, as well as a couple of rounds of play and how it kind of works. All right, so back to the game now. Let's go ahead and show you how to set it up. The first thing you're going to do is take all the non-voting tokens and put them over here on the board. Make sure you have enough in a, one influence cube for each player and put them on the zero marker, which will in, in, involve the votes, how many votes you're going to be getting through each and every state. This is basically your point total. And then you're going to also uh, get your little guys and in turn order, select one of them to a certain region. Now, uh, when you select one to a region, you're also going to add two influence points to that specific region. But also there are certain characters that will have specific abilities that might change this. Like, for instance, Georgia Barnes, she says that she starts with two additional home bases, and in which case she's going to get to put two additional influence tokens in those two areas. So we've gone ahead and done that. We've also went ahead and set up each and every one of these little check marks here, which is going to indicate the uh, round in which you're going to be voting for specific states. Now, after you've gone ahead and done that, everything has been set up. You're going to flip these guys over, and this will then indicate which rounds these things are going to be going ahead and being voted on. And as you can see, this is a one and a two. So for the first two rounds, there aren't going to be any voting phases in which to take over states. So you'll just be using your cards to gain more influence and whatnot. I'm going to have to organize these a little bit so you can see them a little better. Also, now we are going to talk about the uh, other characters here. For instance, this one here, Cheshire Freeman, he says after every vote where he doesn't win the most delegates, he is unable to gain influence based on the number of cubes in that region. 
And and this, which basically, if he if he got six instead of fifteen here, he's going to gain influence for each of the cubes. So he can kind of gain his influence back if he doesn't succeed. And then Lily Nguyen over here, she says the first rally card you play in a round may place one extra influence cube from your hand onto your current region, and rally is going to give you influence. So she's going to have a stronger rally card throughout the game. These over here are going to be the round markers, and basically what's going to happen is uh, the news is going to flip over the first round and see what happens. So after everything's set up, everybody's got their deck of cards, their character, and their influence, as well as starting influence on their cards. Here it tells you how much you start with. You want to start by flipping over the news to see what it has. Uh, news polls. In turn order, you may move any one influence cube uh, on the map to another region that has not yet been voted on. So there's nobody that's been voted on. So everybody in turn order, we'll just go ahead and start with uh, Lily here. She'll be the first player. And she can go ahead and move any cube she wants on the map to any other place that has not been voted for. She'll go and put it on four because that's pretty close to the next time in which, we, in which vote's going to occur. And uh, then we'll go over here and we'll do uh, Chester Freeman. And he will... Maybe he'll go right here. No, no, right here. Why not? And finally, Georgia, she can go ahead and select one as well. And she will select right here. Okay, so that's been done now. The news is over with. Now the next part's gonna happen, which is the action phase, in which players are going to take their hand of cards and you're gonna have this full hand of cards every time you do this, and you're going to select four cards of your choice. Let's go over the cards a little bit. The first card is called the Fundraiser. When you put this face down, whenever you flip it over, you're gonna get one influence cube, and these are your influence cubes, which are used for telling if you're gonna win votes or not. This is a rally. You get to place two influence cubes from your character card onto the board in the region where your character or your presidential candidate is currently located. Uh, this one over here is a positive ad. You can place one influence cube onto any region from your card. This is a negative ad. You can remove an influence cube from the map. Uh, this one here is a plan. You can pay an influence cube from your character to move to any region you want on the board. It's pretty useful there. The boss will simply allow you to move to any adjacent space. And then you've got these super pack cards, which are pretty interesting. The more you have, the more likely you are to win them. Uh, when you put them face down and flip them up, nothing happens unless you have played the most during the round. If you played the most, you're going to gain four influence. Um, and if you are if you play the least, you're going to gain nothing. However, if you're tied, you're going to gain two. So you always want to have the most of these things if you're going to go for it, or at least hope to tie. So after you've got, we've got talk, looked at the cards now, let's go ahead and go through the action phase. Each player is going to secretly select any four of these cards to put down in order. So we'll go ahead and move this up a little bit so you guys can see any idea how it works. So George is going to select maybe this one, and this one, and... How about this one and perhaps this one and we'll have th this be the order this is her order and then we'll go ahead and set the rest of the cards aside and we'll just show you Chester because not a lot of room here just to show you how, how it kind of works with two players and uh, he'll go ahead and put down these three and perhaps this one all right now, Lily would also do this, but just for the sake of being able to see this, we're just going to use these two characters. All right, so the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to flip over the first card. Everybody that is playing will flip over their first card and do whatever it says in turn order. So um, it would be Lily, then Chester, then George, Georgia. So we'll just say she went, so Chester's going to go super pack. Doesn't do anything, but if he has the most, he gains four. One influence cu uh, cube for the fundraiser. So he's going to take one influence cube out of the uh, she's going to take one influence cube out of the bag and put it there. Now they're going to flip over the next phase. And he's going to have another super pack, and she's going to have a fundraiser, so another influence cube onto her card. And finally, another flip, and three super packs for him, one for her, and so nothing happens there. And finally, this, a fundraiser for him, so he's going to get one influence cube out of his bag. And she's got a positive ad, which means she can go ahead and place down onto the board one cube in any region she wants. So basically like uh, commercial, right? And right there would be nice. And so now she's beating red there. Then after that, we're going to go on to the voting phase. And because this is the first round of the game, this is going to get flipped over, meaning the round one is done and round two is next. So because the first two rounds don't have any votes, you're not going to have to worry about this board uh, too much, but you can still be moving around to find uh, the nearest location in which votes are going to take place. After that, you're going to take all the cards everybody has played and put them back into their respective hands. There we go. And also, oh, don't forget too, the super packs, right? He played the most of them, so he's going to instantly get four. However, she only played one, so she's going to get nothing. So it's very important to make sure you do your super packs uh, correctly. So he's got a ton of influence now, which is going to be useful for him later. And these will go back into his hand. 
So then the next round would begin, and you simply take another news card and read what it says. If the player, the player who played the most superback cards gains six influence cubes. If there is a non-zero tie, all players gain three influence cubes. So you're always going to get something. Provide if you put all four down, everybody put all four down. You're all going to gain at least three. However, it's kind of like it's kind of a push your luck thing, right? So we'll go ahead and say that, that round was taken care of too, so we can show you another round of the game, the third phase of the game, in which we'll have players moved around a little bit, and. Where's that? Nah, there's a three. So we'll say this character went here, and uh, this character moved over here. This player went here. So now we're on the third round, we'll say. So we've skipped a round, and that way we can actually talk about how voting works. So we now know this is the third round. We're going to put this guy here, and that's going to simula simulate that uh, we're going to be doing a voting for the voting phase for this state. If, it ta if somebody takes first place, they're going to gain 12 victory points. If somebody takes five, they're going to gain five. If there's a tie for first place, then you're going to distribute all of the votes evenly. If there's a tie for second place, and first place gets theirs, first would get 12 points, and second and third, who are tied for second, would take uh, five divided by two as best you can. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the third round of cards. We'll flip over one of these. It says, when playing a bus or a playing card, you may place one influence cube from the bank onto your destinated region. region. So that's pretty good. So once again, they're going to go ahead and uh, it, look, look at their cards, and every single round, the uh, marker will actually switch to the next player. So this was first round, second round, and then this is the third round, so she is going to be the first player for this one. And right now, yellow is in a good spot because he's going to be able to put influence cubes down because he's currently here. So we'll go ahead and say, okay, where's blue? Blue wants to get there. Can she get there? Well, let's go ahead and see. We'll go ahead and put this one down here. And then this one and these two, okay? And once again, we're just going to do two players here just so it's easier to see for everybody. This player here is going to dump these three and then this one. Okay. So now everybody's done that once again. The action phase is to start. We're going to flip over the first one for each player. And because she is now the first player, she's going to start and she's going to pay one influence cube to her bag, and that will allow her to move to any location, which is going to be here, because she's going to try and stop him from winning, getting the votes here. And he is going to place two influence onto a location he's currently at. So right now it's two to zero. Next, the next cards are going to get flipped over, and another rally there for him, and what has she got? She's got a fundraiser. Okay, so fundraiser means she's going to gain an influence, and he is then going to rally again. So I'm putting two more, so four to zero. She's in trouble here. Flip, and then another flip. Okay, another rally for, uh, sorry, she, she gets to go first. So she was going to rally, so she'll put two down here. And then he's going to rally again. So now it's six to two. And the final flip is going to be, oh, a rally. Now look at this. She actually played a rally, but she has no more influence on her card. So this is useless. So you got to be very careful not to be doing this because you want to make sure every action is useful. It would be much better to have her done a fundraiser to gain an influence, just like he did. So he's actually going to gain an influence cube from this bag because he successfully managed to count his cubes. So one cube goes on to him. And now after that's been done, every all the players, maybe she chose to go somewhere else and do something else, for instance. Maybe she went over here and put some influence down. Uh, and then these are cards are going to go back into the, each player's hand as per normal. And we're going to go ahead and tally up the votes. This is pretty, pretty simple, right? You're going to say, okay, this person got six and these are going to go. And that's 12 points for him, moving him to 12. And she managed to get five. These will go back to the bag for her and she'll move up five points. Now, his ability said if he didn't get the first place, he would have got influence based on the number of influence here, but he did win first place, so no big deal. And uh, yeah, you would continue doing that. So that was the third round of the game. You'd flip this over, signifying it's done. And now we're going to the fourth round, so you would take this and put it here. And also, if there's more than one number of the same type on a... Uh, on the board, like for instance, there's two voting areas for four here, then you're going to put two voting booths down, and those will be tallied during the vote phase. Always remember during the organized phase, you're just simply taking stuff off and reorganizing, preparing for the next round, moving the primary to the next player, and continuing the game, right? Drawing another one of these guys here, seeing what happens, moving around the board, putting down influence, collecting influence, and causing a whole bunch of problems for your opponents while trying to become the next president of the United States.
And that is the basic idea for how to play the primary. It's pretty simple, right? Going around the board and collecting as much influence as you can, stopping your opponents from becoming the uh, victory in each of the different state locations, or basically regions, right? And going through 12 rounds, whoever has the most votes at the end becomes the president as the winner of the game. So what do I think about it? This game is good. It's a whole lot of fun, and the theme is definitely there. Each character has their unique actions, and there is quite a few of them. I think I'll go over a couple if I can find all the different characters. Let me go ahead and grab those really quick. Ah, there we go. Now let's look at them. So first we've got Aaron Fields. says, boss cards allow you to travel two adjacent regions instead of just one. Uh, Calvin Matsui, when playing a bus card, you may play one influence card from your hand uh, onto your designated region. That makes the bus card usable for two actions. Uh, Ryan Gupta, playing cards don't cost any influence to move around the board. Normally it costs one influence to move as a pl for a plane, but it's free with that with him. Kenneth Walker says every round that you play two or more fundraiser cards, you gain an influence card from the bank, and so on and so forth. They all have their own unique abilities and their own unique starting influence. But what really gets me in this game that I really, really enjoy is how you you have to basically set up everything up prior to when things are going to happen. Sometimes you know you're not going to get a state. You're too far away. You don't have enough influence. You can see what's going on with your other players. But you know the next round is going to be your ticket to getting a lot of points. And as you're playing for each and every round, you're trying to figure out where is going to be the best location for you and where is your best location for your influence. Sometimes it's better to actually just use a single ad campaign to throw an influence somewhere that will give you second place. And those little steals are going to be very, very useful. And I've done that quite a few times. That's a lot of fun as well. The characters are all very bad. Balance. They all feel very. Um, they all feel like they kind of mesh together in their own unique ways, and they all provide a unique, different aspect to the game. The news cards are cool. I always like it when games provide something that happens every round that's unique and different, and kind of gives you a different feel to a game. Uh, and they this, these uh, these do it very well. Action cards played this round cannot be used next round. If this card is drawn during round 12, disregard it and draw another card. Negative adds cost an influence cube to play, so that changes how the cards work in the game. This game is basically kind of like Robo Rally and those other kind of games where you're setting up to see what happens and flipping them over and you can kind of in tune with what you think your opponent is going to do based on what they're kind of looking to get so it has those really nice aspects of it the art is cool I like it I like the feel of it it does feel kind of like I don't know if I'd say like, kind of patriotic and it's still got that like very vibrant and colorful feel and it really works for this game so theme quality content all of it's really excellent. It's one of those games I think you're definitely going to know instantly if it's something you're going to want to pick up, if you don't mind that. And even the political aspect of it is completely, it's fine. Like, there's nothing nothing outrageous in this game that's going to detract you. I think it's a nice game for pretty much everybody on all spectrums. I definitely support this one. This one is getting my stamp of approval and it's staying in my collection. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go check out other videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all helps. We do greatly appreciate it, as well as checking out our unfilteredgamer.com website. Got tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And we're currently giving away Batman with everything board games and the cardboard stacker. Three of us are teaming up to give away a really big fat game that many people like so go ahead and check that out on the site also go ahead and uh, check out our friends and affiliates everythingboardgames.com the giveaway geek and Fernand, the cardboard stacker they do some great tutorials and giveaways and all that kind of stuff and i do greatly recommend them as well as uh checking out our latest reviews for mystia and uh secret unknown stuffs escape from dulce two really cool games on kickstarter i'm very happy all right, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to seeing you next time.